Welcome to The Trader, a traitor's podcast. My name is Matthew and I am a writer, reality competition TV fanatic and a 100% faithful, I promise. The Trader is a deep dive into each episode of the live action murder mystery party with huge stakes, The Traitors. This season of the podcast is centred on The Traitors UK, now streaming on BBC iPlayer and Peacock. Coming up... I'll be deep diving into episode 3 of The Traitors UK alongside a special co-host. First though, it's time for TT News. Traitors US host Alan Cumming has been doing some American talk show appearances to talk about The Traitors. He appeared on Late Night with Seth Meyers a few weeks ago, followed by Watch What Happens Live with Traitors Reunion host Andy Cohen in the past couple of days. On Seth Meyers, Alan spoke about the internet hilarity surrounding his accent, the fact that he really saw his hosting gig as an acting job, and that filming The Traitors was the highlight of his professional year in 2022. On Watch What Happens Live... Andy dishes out some quick-fire traitors questions for Alan, including who he thought was the worst player, his thoughts on the finale, and why everyone disliked Kate so much. The interviews are really good fun, and I'll post links to the YouTube clips in your podcast player show notes. Next, an opportunity that may appeal to traitors fans. Despite its huge success in other countries like the USA and Australia, Reality competition show Survivor never quite took off in the UK when two series aired between 2001 and 2002 on ITV. However, the BBC are reviving the show and are currently looking for UK applicants. SurvivorUK.com has this to say. Survivor is a unique contest of social, mental and physical skill where a group of individuals are cast away in a remote location to try and win the ultimate competition. Do you have the instinct, cunning and strategy to become the sole survivor and take home a life-changing £100,000 prize? If you watch The Traitors, imagining yourself in the player's positions, then this could be the opportunity for you. However, applications close at midnight on Monday the 6th of March, so you should check this out ASAP. That's SurvivorUK.com. It's now time for a hefty deep dive into episode 3 of The Traitors UK, which means it's also time to meet my co-host for this mission. My guest slash co-host today is returnee to the podcast, Andy Rutherford. Andy is a board game, Middlesbrough and Formula One fanatic. Andy, I share one of those things in common with you. He is also studying creative writing and runs an arts and craft business, which I'm hoping he will tell us a little more about later on. Andy, welcome back. How are you doing? I'm not bad, thank you. I'm so I'm so happy to be back there, especially because we're talking about the UK uh, series now. So I'm really excited. How are you? Oh, brilliant, brilliant. I'm good. Yep, yep. Looking forward <laughs> to talking about it as well. Last time I spoke to you, we were talking all about the US traitors. Since then, can you give us uh, any spoiler-free thoughts on how this season ended? <laughs> I, I, I enjoyed it ultimately. I didn't like. I didn't. I preferred the UK overall. It's. I don't know. I think they learned a lot with um, the US what version, which is why I think the UK version actually went out first because there was a lot. There's. There's. I didn't realize by watching it today. Um, how much extra they put in there, just little bits and pieces that I felt were actually missing from the US version. So, uh, but ultimately, I still really enjoyed it. And uh, I wouldn't say was, I personally was happy with the ending, how it ended, but that's all I can say, really. <laughs> okay, yes. it's. Uh, uh, I don't know if controversial is the right word, but it's a lot of people talking about the ending of the, the US Traitors. It's definitely a, a really exciting ending. So we're going to talk about episode three of the UK Traitors today. Uh, you've obviously seen the first couple of episodes. Uh, what do you, what do you think at this point? Excellent. It's it's because it, obviously this is the obviously the first series. I think I mentioned this when we did our US version. Is that um, how I thought that the 
BBC played it really well by releasing all three episodes for the first series. So this where we're the one we're talking about today, you know, it's the end of that that first initial thing that I think hooked everybody in. Yeah. And I think this is the episode where we were I was like, Wow, this is the episode that's actually this is where it gets good. So when you said about doing episode three, I was like, Yes, this is this is really good because it's the one that really where it, where it starts getting, going down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, brilliant. Now, before we dive right into the episode, Andy, we're going to play our podcast game again, The Trader Traitor. Our goal throughout the episode from here on in is to tell one lie to one another. Now, the last time, I, I think we're at nil-nil. I think we deceived... No, well, maybe that's 1-1. One, one. We deceived one another. Yeah. Uh, we, we didn't detect one another's lies. So the lie that we tell throughout uh, the rest of the episode has to be a fabrication or a made-up fact. It can't be a fake opinion, like saying you hate Andrea, when obviously there is no other choice but to love Andrea. Nobody hates Andrea. <laughs> no one hates <laughs> Andrea. Andrea. <laughs> or is it Andrea? It's Andrea. I'm a yes. Andrea. Yeah. At the end of the episode, we each have to put our traitor hunting skills to the test and decide what we thought the other person's lie was. Are we ready to lie to one another? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Good. Uh, I think we should just go for it then, straight ahead with episode three. Yeah. Let's do it. Episode three begins at breakfast and the players are awaiting the result of the second murder. Uh, I like how the camera shows us Nikki and Aisha's pictures with big red crosses on them. Uh, Pretty severe. Poor Nikki and Aisha. The players start to arrive at breakfast and I think they're all feeling pretty bad about Nikki. They've just had their first round table. I think they're not quite over it yet because it was was so harsh and they failed in their first banishment. Yeah, Uh, and I think the reasons behind why they voted her out as well, I sort sort of feel like... I don't feel like they sort of follow their advice all the time but yeah i feel like yeah the reasons why they voted her out they're just that's when they're all saying aren't they that it's uh you know we need to actually not do that again and let the herd mentality get the better of us yeah now at breakfast wolf and Alyssa are like in full acting mode uh, theo and aaron still seem to be focusing on imran they're quite suspicious of him and as everybody arrives the last two we're waiting for are Alex and Claire, or I guess I should say one of Alex and Claire. We don't know who it's going to be yet. What's really interesting here is that Tom obviously wants Alex to return. That's his girlfriend, but he can't show his nerves too much to everybody. Uh, And he's sitting right beside Matt, who we know also is really eager for Alex to come back, which makes this sort of weird, awkward uh, situation. Well, I guess Matt doesn't know it's awkward. Yeah, <laughs> I don't, and this actually reminds me of something I talked about in the episode last week. So there's a new version of the Traitors coming out in Norway, I think, and the next season is going to be all couples or all uh, sort of pairings, either couples or best friends or relatives. Uh, so this is like that Alex and Tom's relationship is like a preview of that. It's going to be like Alex and Tom times twelve. Or whatever. I, I think. Do you like the idea of the couples, the partners? It's interesting. Like when I when I um, was listening to podcasts, he's mentioned using the uh, the other day. It's an interesting concept. I'm, the one thing I was thinking of is is does everyone else know who the other couples are? Funnily enough, I was thinking about that today. I thought, wouldn't it be interesting if the yeah you you had to keep that a secret as well? Mm. I assume that. I assume that won't be the case. I assume that you'll know who the pairs are. That's yeah. what I reckon. I think it could work. It'd be interesting. Um, yeah, I think it, it could work. It'll just be, it'll just be, see how how it gets pulled off. Really, and like, I worry for some couples if their relationship isn't strong enough to like survive the uh, the stress of the traitors. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think it'll be interesting. I'll definitely be. I'd like to. I'll definitely be watching it. Yeah, yeah. Like I said last week, if there are no subtitled versions, I'm just going to have to learn Norwegian. I have no choice. So at breakfast, we realise that eventually Alex arrives and that Claire is the one who's been murdered. We have a flashback to the traitors discussing it the night before. And their, their theory is that Claire was a bit too strong. She was sort of 
leading ideas amongst the players and they thought that her murder would sort of disperse everybody uh, do you think do you think it was a good call was claire the right one to get rid of i think at this early stage it's um i think from that point of view yes it was uh, it was a shame because i i was actually really looking forward to what claire could uh, would do with obviously uh, being like a police officer and things yeah. so yeah, i thought that would have been really interesting so i think from a viewer point of view no but i can completely understand why she'd be the one to go so i don't think it was anyone's eyes on her so it makes sense to go for someone who's not really under any sort of spotlight at the moment because yeah i think that's uh, yeah i think that was like a smart move it was just a shame to see her go so early yeah theo it gets really upset there's there's other people saying that claire's murder is a really low blow i kind of think you know it, it's a game you know, this, this is what you're here for it's, it isn't personal and already episode three well i'm saying it's per it's personal now as breakfast goes on things are only going to get worse wilf starts crying as well probably i, I assume from guilt i don't think he's that good an actor i think he feels so bad he can't no, help I it yeah, I do feel really sorry for him to be honest, because everyone thinks he's acting. It's like he's obviously not acting. I just think he's he obviously wears his emotions like, on his sleeve, which I think yeah. like obviously a lot of them do. And I think that was one of the things going on Twitter when it was on about how many uh, of the male contestants like cried. Um, and I just feel like he's just like one of those, he's just like you know, he just wore his heart on his sleeve, and you know, I think he just let it get the better of him, but. Um, yeah, it's. I just yeah, I just felt sorry for him to be honest. I felt people have been a bit too mean. Yeah. <laughs> in, in in sort of saying he was acting, he was he wasn't acting. He was just. Uh, I think he was being a bit too honest, maybe actually. Yeah, I don't think yeah, I don't think he's good good enough of an actor to pull that off. And we saw that last week with Alyssa. She, she had, she lied about why she was crying, but I think she was genuinely crying because she felt bad isn't it interesting <laughs> amanda hadn't really shown this yet amanda no <laughs> tears she's she's fine with it yeah she's uh, just amazing i love amanda <laughs> like, you can totally see why like you know people say she's a queen because she absolutely is she's just amazing and then like following her on instagram and stuff and just seeing all the stuff she gets up to is just <laughs> she's just the best yeah it's amanda like, watching this episode today i was just like God, you're, you're good. I know why you're one of the better characters now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Amanda has this whole, sort of whole post traitors career that she she's touring the country, she's all over the place. Good on her. Yeah. At breakfast as well, Maddie is she's right on to Wilf. She thinks that he's faking it. She thinks he's crying isn't real, and she thinks Aaron's in on it too. She's she's sure now they're the traitors. Thus begins. A plethora of internet memes that <laughs> that are still going on to this day. After breakfast, we start to see some of the discussions around the house then. Some notice that it, it's been two women who've been murdered so far, and they think maybe that means the traitors are, are men or, or some of the lads. That's either really observant or very simplistically stereotypical. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> sure about that. Uh, any thoughts on that, Fidi? Yeah, I'd, it's it's so difficult. Because what you said about the um, episode the other day with uh, John and him saying about them being the alpha males sort of thing, and I don't think that's the case with these logs. So in this bit, I, 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 one thing I've really um, I noticed was like that uh, Ivan and Aaron are both hugging on the uh, in a proper and really embracing each other. Yeah, but it's obviously like, friendly, and I thought that was like really nice to see to sort of see like that sort of like. You know, just two blokes just hugging each other and it was like you know so i don't I, it's difficult to put these lot in like a, a laddish sort of uh group so i don't know if it's like that like it's a whole alpha male thing obviously doesn't exist anyway but i just think it's sort of luck of the draw really that, that just two women with ones murdered yeah uh, yeah yeah I th yeah i think they're they're probably reading into it too i mean and i mean they're wrong anyway they're wrong because yeah. <laughs> it's you know wealth is the only male traitor detective maddie is then she thinks it's sus that aaron voted for imran last night at the round table her theory is he's a traitor and he voted for imran to look good because he knew that nikki would announce that she was a faithful and he would be able to say, oh, well, I didn't vote for her. I, I picked somebody else. I, I mean, it's kind of a good theory. <laughs> it's, it's wrong, but I understand why she thinks that. For me, it all falls apart with 
um, the fact that he wouldn't know what everyone else is voting because she said, oh, if everyone else is voting, it, I mean, obviously we weren't in the room because apparently the obviously round table's got off like half an hour or something. So it's difficult to know for certain. And maybe the conversation was leading that way, but yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, I did feel, you know, we'll go into it a bit later on a bit more about uh, Aaron's uh, audio in this episode, but it's, I did sort of feel like a bit, yeah, she was like maybe piling a bit too much on Aaron. Um, you know, I, I, Aaron's my, out of everyone, like next to Andrea and Amanda, like Aaron's my favourite character. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I've written in my notes that Aaron must be protected at all costs. <laughs> uh, you know, because he is, and he, he's, you know, he's he's a young lad who's, you know, he's just having, like, he, he might not have been in a position where people are sort of pointing fingers at him. He might not know how to sort of like, handle it, but I, yeah. I, I, cause I, I do quite like Maddie. I didn't like her at this point. Obviously, I've seen the whole season. And at this point, I wasn't a fan of her because I felt like she was pushing things a bit too far. But as time went on, she's just... She's so funny. She's yeah. brilliant. <laughs> She's yeah. really great. Detective Maddie does make me laugh. And after Aaron, she also mentions Wilf again. She she has got this other theory now. She, she thinks that Wilf specifically mentioned the day before that he was very close to Claire, as if he went out of his way to do this and then murdered her. I mean, I guess she, maybe she's kind of right because Wilf is a traitor and he did choose to murder Claire. I, I don't know if... He was smart enough to mention to other people that he was close to. I, I, I don't know about that. But whatever the case, Alyssa is hearing this conversation and realising, you know, this could be bad news for Wilf. So she's then desperately trying to throw Maddie off course and, and focus her attention solely on Aaron. And at this point, Alyssa makes this Ted Bundy comparison. <laughs> I mean, steady on, Alyssa. Like, um, I understand her point. She's trying to say that sometimes charming, handsome people can be secretly manipulative and deceptive. But you know, Ted Bundy, <laughs> but is a, is a bit a bit extreme, I reckon. <laughs> John picks up on Imran's comment from days ago that when they were in a team on Mission 1, Imran had said that his team was at a disadvantage because they had older people in it. John is suddenly offended by this memory. Pipe down, John. You know, wh why are you bringing this thing up from two days ago that Imran said? I, I, I don't know. It's It's... A bit of conflict here where he, conflict's not needed. I mean, he, he, yeah, I mean, I, I can understand why, like, some of the, the older people, air quotes, older people, uh, you know, wouldn't like that sort of comment. But he's, he, he, he shouldn't have said it. <laughs> but it's like he obviously didn't do it to be horrible. I just think he was just making a... Uh, um, just a comment, and he was right to be fair. <laughs> you yeah. know, he wasn't the quickest by any sort of means. So, you know, it's just uh, it just is what it is, really. Yeah, I think this is where John's spiraling begins, and it only gets worse <laughs> as the episode goes on. I mentioned last week that you know, if you enjoy a drink, it might not be a bad idea to play a drinking game with Imran whenever he mentions his PhD. It comes up for the first time in this episode here. And by the end of, no spoilers, but by the end of the episode, he's mentioned it another two times. <laughs> the players kind of start to simmer down a bit because at this point, they're actually looking forward to the mission today and they think it's going to take their minds off of the main game, which is probably not a bad idea. Andrea gives this really lovely motivational interview about age not being a barrier. Again, I am a Standrea. Um, everything she says, I am behind 100%. So we move on to the mission, and the mission this episode is the creepy fun fair, which Claudia alluded to at breakfast, and which Amanda was absolutely not feeling. <laughs> Claudia explains the game. It's essentially a, a sort of matching game. We have the players split into two groups. Five players will go onto this spinning, they'll be strapped onto this wheel and spun around slowly. Each group is asked the same question where they have to vote, pick a player who they think is most likely to do something. And if both of the group's answers match, they win £100 per person. Um, I, the, wheel, the wheel element is, is almost totally inconsequential. Like, why put them on a wheel for this and spin them round? It doesn't really do anything. Except that if they stay on, Claudia tells them they'll get an extra £2,500 by the end. So I guess there's that. 
I do realize, by the way, every episode I seem to just shade the missions. <laughs> I, I, you, you'd think I wasn't a super fan of the show. I am a super fan of the show. I'm being harsh about the missions because I care. I don't want to give the impression that I think they're all horrible. I, I'm just being picky. Uh, what did you I, think of this mission, Andy? I feel like with the missions on that last point is that I feel like they put a bit too much weight on like you know you learn something about you know the people and I think on that I know they put a bit too much weight on it was really they're still trying to win money and I feel like I think that's why I preferred the American missions more than the UK missions because I think they just sort of went right we're doing this to win money but I, I really enjoyed the mission itself I thought it was great um I was like, I got my diet sort of designer sort of head on when I was watching because one of them said, like, oh, I don't want to go on that rickety old uh, Ferris wheel. And it's like, it's obviously been designed that way. And I was just like, the most of the mission thinking about how it was made and things like that. Because it's, it's really, it looks brilliant. Like, it looks like really yeah. rusty. But you know, obviously, safety measures will be like massive. But, um, and I liked, um, I, I felt, I was really happy for Meryl. I think it's one of those things where you don't really sort of think about, you always think about like the limitations that people with disabilities might have. Yeah. And you know you don't you think about all the obvious stuff, but you don't think about things like roller coasters and things. So I was dead pleased for her that she like and everyone cheered for her when she got picked. But um, yeah, the mission itself I thought was good. I felt really sorry for Faye because yeah, there just seemed to be gunning for her for no literally no reason. Uh, you know, the, she was picked out to be the most was it untrustworthy or something like that. Most ruthless and most two faced. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, just, I don't know because like Faye's so like, this seems really nice I just don't understand where that comes from yeah it's a shame that there's a, there are a lot of interesting questions that they're asked um, most likely to be a faithful and they all pick John I was quite surprised <laughs> by that John's been a, a little bit uh, you know a wee bit unpleasant at times See, I think this is where John starts to get a big, a bit too big for his boots. He sort of uh, almost feels like because he's been put in that position, he almost feels like he's got like kind of a top launch on everything. He can sort of say, right, well, everyone thinks I'm a faithful, so I've got a bit more say in everything. I think that's why he does sort of things turn the way they end up doing. But uh, it seems strange. Who was he on the wheel with at the time? I can't. I've literally watched it this morning for like the fourth time. I can't. Remember who he was on with at the time. He was on with uh, Theo and Matt and Wilf and Faye. See, I don't know why they didn't go for like Matt or like yeah. Theo. I don't know. It just seemed like strange. But again, you never know. Obviously, we're not about, like there the whole time, so that's true. They have their reasons. And I like your your idea. Makes sense that because he won that vote. Maybe that explains some of the things he begins to say later on. Yeah, that's really interesting. He had a bit of a talking. He had a talking head afterwards. And he sort of looked really smug. So good. Oh, there we are. Mm. Most likely to be faithful. There we go. Now they know that I'm faithful. And I feel like he just sort of almost felt like that was. He had like that sort of armor all of a sudden. Yeah, yeah. They also vote on who you'd be most like. Uh, sorry, who you'd most like to be on a desert island with, and they vote for Theo. I'm not. I'm not saying I don't like Theo. I'm just saying I think Theo might be a bit of hard work on it. Theo, if you're listening, I'm sorry. Yeah, I I want a quiet person on a desert island who's not going to speak. That's that's my thinking. I mean, Theo maybe would be good entertainment. Maybe that's yeah. what they thought. Um, most likely to flirt their way to the final is Matt. Like we've said, poor Faye gets voted most ruthless and most two-faced. I guess it's, it's good for Wilf, though. He's on the wheel at the same time, so he's thinking, mm -hmm. well, they didn't pick me for that one, so I'm doing pretty good in my job as a traitor. Round two, because we have we have two groups that take their turn on the wheel. Like you said, uh, Meryl. Meryl's buzzing. She's having a great time getting to go on this ride. And... Andrea, a, a hero Andrea gets to go on the wheel. I don't think she's too happy about it, but you know what? She does it. Uh, she doesn't back out. So good for her. They vote in this section most likely to Google themselves is Alex. Most gullible, Maddie. Maddie even votes for herself. <laughs> Little do they know she is actually on to wealth for probably all the wrong reasons, but, you know, she's she's got something there. Poor Poor Ryan is voted <laughs> most forgettable. However, he, he does make a good point. He says he's quite happy with that because it means that they won't write his name at the round table. Uh, so, you know, maybe, maybe there's something in that. Maybe being forgettable is not too bad at this point. Yeah, I, I, I do actually quite I quite like Ryan. I think he's uh, 
Because at first he was one of the, in the in the earlier episodes you, you do sort of like I know it sounds awful but like sort of not forget about him but he does sort of like he's in the background I feel like yeah. as the time does go on he's obviously a bit more forward but yeah it's uh, yeah it's a good thing especially in the early stages because that gets you past that initial bit I think it'll feel like everyone will be more worried about getting based out straight away for dark reasons whereas Ryan wouldn't have that issue yeah the last couple of votes they have are most deserving to win the prize and they pick Meryl which is nice and they, they pick the person who has the most influence is Andrea because they are all Standreas. I do wonder though could this be a bad thing for Andrea to because we you know we saw at the start of this episode that the traitors chose to murder Claire because they thought she was kind of a natural leader so if they're then saying that Andrea has the most influence you know, if I was her, I might be worried about that. That if everybody thinks she's quite influential, she's potentially a target for murder as well, maybe. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if it's what they're like, because obviously they're in like a very sort of, you know, they're in that sort of game there and then. So I don't know if they maybe sort of saw influential in the way that maybe people sort of look more, more thought that people look up to her maybe and were more influenced by because I because I was watching that day and I thought well I can't see how she's like more influential but I thought well maybe they're just sort of because in the heat of the moment they might not be thinking about influential in that way perhaps I don't know I don't yeah, know yeah. that makes yeah that makes sense maybe they yeah they might not mean that she sort of drives discussions about traitors forward but maybe she's just quite admirable perhaps yeah. maybe that's how they think of it at the end of the mission, they raise eight thousand seven hundred pounds, which means the total now is thirty one thousand seven hundred pounds. So you know the stakes are getting real. Claudia says that the task might have been useful in helping them gather evidence about one another. Now I've said it before, and I'll say it again: it hasn't. It hasn't really. I think it's shown them what they think is true about people. It's not shown them what is actually true. You know, if it revealed, if it really revealed true evidence, it would have revealed that Wilf was two-faced and ruthless, but it didn't. And they all thought Faye was, and she's not a traitor. If anything, I think the game helped the traitors more than anyone else. And Alyssa and Amanda acknowledge this in their interviews, that actually this game has helped them realise how everybody else sees one another. We have more discussions after the mission in the house. Um... Here is where the most used phrase of the entire series comes into play. I'm a 100% faithful. This is why I say this at the beginning of every single episode. <laughs> and it's just so ridiculous as well, as if just saying that proves, you, proves you're a faithful, except it's when I say so it. When I say funny, it, it's true. Like, yeah. It's just like they, they use it like a comma. And I think it's <laughs> again as the series goes on, like, you know, there's something that's like, oh, I'm 100%, 100%, 100%, I'm 100%, and it's stamped out. It's, uh, I think even uh, Nikki in your interview with uh, with her um, on the last episode, she even said 100%, you know, oh, there, I've said it. She did, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so it's, uh, yeah. They love it. Uh, John reveals to Wilf that Maddie suspects him and Aaron, and this makes Wilf really worried because he knows from last week at the round table with Nikki that just one single suggestion can completely snowball. So even though it's only one person suspecting him, that could turn into something really bad. There's then this very strange scene that we've kind of alluded to. Uh, John is giving a massage to Andrea, presumably because she hurt herself on the ride, on the wheel. I think her shoulders were sore. And John's, that's what he does for a living. He's a, he's a sort of massage therapist. And Aaron, in my opinion, rather innocently, is asking him questions about it. He's intrigued. He wants to get to know him. He doesn't really know how one goes about becoming a masseur. John is really annoyed about all the questions. Um, I, I don't know why. He, he gets really infuriated by it. And, and only more infuriated the more he thinks about it as the episode goes on. He's also got this gut feeling that Amanda is 100% not a traitor and at this point John, Tom and Andrea have a seat and they're looking at all the paintings above the fireplace and they're theorising about who they can trust but they're, they're almost all completely wrong they say that they trust <laughs> Alyssa completely and they doubt most of the others they do, they do say they find Welf's crying over Claire a bit strange so they picked up on something there 
Wilf is also really struggling. There's a moment where he talks to Alyssa alone without anybody else around, and he's really paranoid, and he's asking her already, you're not going to betray me, are you? So he's he's having a tough time in episode three. It's, it's not looking too good in terms of his mental state and how he's coping with the task of being a traitor. Alex describes the round table as they're about to go in as a witch hunt which suggests a bit of self-awareness. She realizes what they did last time and she knows they can really easily work themselves into, you know, mass hysteria. You mentioned this earlier, you talked about kind of herd mentality. So Mm. they are aware that maybe they're going to do it again. So we move into the round table. Here we go. Detective Maddie, she's right in there. She's going to vote for Aaron. And she brings up her theory again. She says, you voted for Imran last time, and I think you did that to make yourself look good. She also mentions Wilf, uh, because he had suggested Imran too. Aaron tries to defend himself, but you said this earlier as well. I like Maddie, but she's quite relentless. You know, she really goes, she goes in hard here, um, which Aaron is really struggling with especially as the votes begin to come in in a little while. Yeah. Theo brings up Imran next, um, and and Theo is weirdly upset. He's also getting quite emotional. He thinks that Imran is a traitor who murdered Claire to hurt him. <laughs> I don't seems, know why a traitor would do that. <laughs> it just seems so unfair. It's like, I, I'll be honest, I'm, I'm quite rare and I actually quite like Imran. I feel that he's... You know, he's one of these people who he, he, you know, he doesn't say it how it is. I think he just sort of feels like he's sort of just telling people the truth. Um, and, like you know, he's just sort of talking like what's on his mind. And I feel like his ability to mask or not mask emotion, but the fact he does a mask emotion quite easily. I feel like people sort of see him as like a closed book. And like I feel like he's, he's obviously, obviously very intelligent because he's uh, told us that a few times. Um, <laughs> But I think maybe he's he, he's probably maybe playing the game too well in terms of like emotion. I feel that his that's where he let himself down. I think, but yeah, the the theory of Robin Theo is just like I don't think anyone would be that cruel when it is just a game. Like, what I can't you imagine like the the setting of like three of them in there and Imran's like, right, listen, you two, I don't care what you've got to say. Like Theo, <laughs> gonna get him because he he had a go at me yesterday or something. It just doesn't seem fair. And he was all about the evidence that he knew. <laughs> this is my evidence, and it's like there's no evidence. It's just. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, uh... and they all want to be on a desert island with him. Hey, who knows? Oh, right. <laughs> Alex is annoyed that Imran hasn't said the phrase "I'm not a traitor," which also seems a little bit silly to me. You know, anyone can lie about anything. Saying that simple phrase, you know, that doesn't prove anything. He doesn't. He, that's the thing. I, I, that's one of the things I did like about him. Because he, did, he didn't say it because it's almost like. He goes like, you know, he goes like, listen, and then like, you haven't, still haven't said it. So, and he goes like, what do you want me to say? I could say I'm, a tra- I'm not a traitor. It's not going to like help prove anything. Yeah. So yeah, so it seems a bit strange. Like, why? Why wouldn't you? If you, it just seems like, again, I don't know if it's because you're in this echo chamber where it is just so, you're you're on edge about everything. Perhaps it's like, yeah, I don't know, but it just seems like a really like you said, it's quite silly. Yeah, and it, I, I would think. Surely you'd base your vote on sort of long-term behaviour or maybe slip-ups you make, things that you say that suddenly don't make sense. But yeah, I'm not sure you should base it on simple platitudes. Alyssa, at this point, turns on Aaron because probably she's she's trying to divert attention away from Wilf. She promised him she wasn't going to turn on him. And John then also turns on Aaron, again, because of the, in quote marks, grilling Aaron had given him earlier about massage. <laughs> um, he's, he's annoyed that Aaron was trying to get to know him. I, I, I still don't understand why John was so 
upset by this. It's like, it's you're grinning, and it's like I've, I've written here, Johnny's the worst because I just sort of felt like it, it wasn't like um, like what Maddie was doing. Yeah, she's relentless, but she's like she's very very much putting a point across even though it's completely wrong she's very much putting a point whereas John like, I feel like he actually he's attacking Aaron and I feel like that's where Aaron does start to like spiral even more because it's like you can see from there he gets starts getting upset which is why I think yeah. Maddie later on as well by when she says oh you know when Will fainted for you that's when you left the room and it's like well he's, he's stunned you can see like tears rolling down his face there and so yeah that's where John's sort of like starting to go from a bit there I just sort of feel like I just felt so sorry for him I said he, he needs to be protected um, you know I just I just think that Aaron's one of these people who um, just doesn't have a horrible sort of bone in his body but then no. doesn't realise that other people you know it's like a puppy you know other people <laughs> might be like not as uh tuned into certain things that he might be I suppose the best way to put it but he might not have that filter that can tell when people are maybe yeah. a bit not standoffish, but you know, maybe when they're not in the mood to sort of like to talk about something, I just feel like because he, because of the way he is, and being a, just a genuinely nice person. The voting then starts to commence. It reaches a point where Aaron has four votes, Imran also has four votes, Theo has one vote, and that's when Aaron really. He can't bear it anymore. He gets really upset and he's crying. I mean, he's essentially having a panic attack, I think, or an anxiety attack. He, he just, he's obviously so uncomfortable, he can't even bear to be there. When I first saw the episode, I thought he was done for. I thought that, and, and, and I'm sure he, he really felt like he couldn't help it and he had to leave. But I, I thought when he comes back in, I guess they'd already written down their votes, but I thought even if they don't vote him out now, they are voting him out next week. I, I thought this probably doesn't make him look... It, it probably makes gives the impression he's acting and he actually is a traitor and he's leaving because he doesn't want to be voted out. Yeah, it's a really uncomfortable scene. Really uncomfortable, I feel like, because he's, he's obviously, like... So a bit about myself is I suffer massively with anxiety, so I have, like loads of like panic attacks quite often so i can see a panic attack and i've done that at work where you know i've just had one of those days where everything's piling up but everything's piling up i've had to look at my boss and say right can i i need i need to have a moment can i just go into a room i've done literally the same thing and it is really embarrassing you have to you know you have to get up and everyone can sort of see that you're getting up and you obviously look upset everyone's watching you and you've got to go into this room and sort of sit down and sort of like you know and then you've got to sort of talk to someone about it and things so i really really felt for but Aaron then, I feel like, does, I don't think it matters at this point for me, it doesn't matter who you are, you surely must notice what a panic attack is. It's not nice when people think you, you know, especially being like, obviously a lot of people can't see me, but you can see I'm a, I'm a big bearded bloke with tattoos and like, you know, wearing my heavy metal t-shirt and stuff, you know, <laughs> I like football and Formula One and things. And I, I am the most emotional person that there ever was. I cry right. all the time and I'm more than happy to say it. And it is, you know, people do sort of feel like, oh my God, like, what are you crying for? It's like, it's difficult. So, uh, which is why I went back earlier on about Aaron and Ivan hugging, you know, because I like seeing, you know, on TV these days, men being actually vulnerable and open and everything like that. And I just sort of felt like, that's why I hated John so much later on. <laughs> like... Yeah, the, the fallout from Aaron being upset does, it, from, from some of the other players, seems quite cruel, I, I reckon. At the point when Aaron leaves, what I also noted is that Wilf must be quite relieved at this point because he actually doesn't have any votes and he had been so paranoid that he was going to get some votes. So he's kind of escaped. So he's probably, I'm sure he's, you know, a bit worried about Aaron, but also sitting thinking, this is not looking too bad for me right now. Aaron returns, the voting continues, and at the end... Aaron ends up with six votes, Imran has ten, Theo still has one. I I noticed that by the time Imran reached about seven votes, he kind of just looked kind of quite resigned to it. He's he's actually smiling, he's just sitting back, he's accepted it. Probably because well, he knows there's nothing he can do about it now. And he's clever. He's tidied up the sums, he knows that it's too late. I he probably feels you're all gonna experience what you experienced last time. I'm about to tell you my faithful, you're all idiots. And he does. He really stands up, he reveals that he is a faithful, and they are horrified. I have seen this 
show several times. I've watched this episode several times. I still get such a buzz <laughs> watching this moment when they have to stand up and reveal their status. It's just the most genius uh, creation of TV. I, I just love it. I could watch it over and over. It's, yeah, it's, I bet that feels like, I know it must be awful leaving, but knowing that you get to mic drop like that <laughs> and yeah. then going. I feel like one thing I do like about this one, I think I noticed it from the uh, difference again from the US series, is that when they say, I'm faithful or whatever, they, they go off straight away. Whereas with um, the US one, I felt like they said, I'm faithful, and then they just were able to sort of give like a bit of a speech afterwards. Yeah. I felt like actually just by sort of saying, I'm faithful, and they almost sort of like, it's that like cool guys walk, walk away from explosions because they just sort of walk off then and then it just leaves the room to go what have we done oh no and it's um i really like that uh, the way of doing it then yeah, <laughs> yeah it's so. funny isn't it because uh, in the episode last week i spoke to nikki and i had asked her about that i said what do they tell you you, you can and can't say do they tell you to keep it brief but she said no there, she said there were no rules I, which i was really surprised at um but she said no they give you the floor they tell you say what you want to say but it's interesting like you say they so far they are kind of just saying i'm faithful by peace out yeah i feel like <laughs> this is like where I, I, I didn't start off the show with having a very good relationship with hannah i felt like for someone who's who's a comedian <laughs> he's so serious and i've been i've just written down calm down hannah <laughs> i'm with it because she just said she's like, i'm getting sick of this and it's like whoa you know it's just a show after the banishment, then, there are some more discussions about what's just happened. Amanda says in her interview that she feels awful for Aaron. Detective Maddie still thinks Aaron is a traitor, and she now thinks that she believes, he's, she believes he was crying for real, but she misunderstands the reason. She now that she's got a new theory. theory. We're on theory seven or eight at this point. She thinks that he cried because Wilf, who's his fellow traitor, turned on him and you know she's 50 percent right again because wealth is a traitor and he wealth did vote for someone that he shouldn't have voted for in a way but you know she's yeah she's she's aaron isn't a traitor but yeah, she's good saying, like, when aaron was crying already at that point you know <laughs> he came around with just saying but i don't think because he um uh because will actually even says like how he messed up you know, it wasn't him at all. Again, I just I don't, unless just nobody noticed that he was crying. I'm not sure. John, at this point, talking to some of the others, says, "Remember, it's a competition. It's a game. Leaving the room. I mean, come on. Now, I don't do spoilers for future episodes, in case listeners are, you know, listening along to the podcast as they're watching episodes. But I just want you to remember those words from John as we go <laughs> forward. That's all I'm saying. You don't have to wait too long. <laughs> to <laughs> no, remember you don't. Those words. You don't. So it's not too much of a spoiler at all. Aaron comes into the room at that point as John's speaking, and he asks people, "Why didn't you speak to me earlier? If you thought I was a traitor and you were suspicious of me, why didn't you talk to me about it?" John gets weirdly aggressive straight away and says three completely uncorrelated things he says well Aaron you always deflect you don't talk about your life and you're acting like you're on a lad's holiday I don't I don't know what that means and I don't know why that is, is relevant to anything I, I don't know I think John is actually just going off in one he's decided Aaron's his enemy and he kind of can't doesn't want to back down or something I like think that he's I don't, I don't mean to sort of agree with him around here but he's just a grumpy old man I just sort of feel like <laughs> I just I do feel like he just doesn't have I feel like he sees Aaron as a young annoying puppy which is like I said which I can understand to a degree but I just sort of feel like it would be just a bit more empathy there. He just doesn't have any empathy like it's, it's when he put his hand up you know he's, he's got yeah. his hand up and he's sort of like you know he's like sort of Doing that, and he's saying like, and Aaron's just like, you know, Aaron's being really respectful. Saying, can you stop shouting at me? And he's like, you're talking through me. And it's like, well, what, what? You're doing the same thing. Yeah. You know, and Aaron was being, you know, like, you know, he's being really brave. But like, you know, it was it was nice to see Amanda stick up for him, even though she is a traitor. It was really nice to see, you know, when she said, "I've got kids myself," and like she went up to him and like straight away and was like, "You know, you're okay." And stuff. That was really nice to see that someone actually did notice that, but. I feel like John should have been called out a bit more. 
And I agree with your suggestion about Maddie and John and the the way they treat Aaron. They're both accusing him quite relentlessly of being a traitor, but at least I can understand Maddie is is doing it as part of the game. She's she's got what she thinks is her theory that it's not true, but it makes sense. So she's at least basing her accusations on a, a clever idea she's come up with, whereas John just seems to be shouting at Aaron because he doesn't personally like him, and it it all becomes a bit cruel. So it's it's difficult to really take to him at all. You, it may not come as a surprise. I haven't asked John to be on the podcast as a guest. <laughs> I feel like he may not want to come on if he listens to this. Oh well. Ivan is furious with himself because he's gotten it wrong at the round table twice, and it makes sense because Ivan is a big games fan and he writes books about games so he's annoyed with himself that he's he's you know completely in the dark i think if i i met ivan in real life i think i'd get on with him the most out of all of them because yeah. i you know the four games and because like, again i think it comes down to like writing and like again like designer brains like for my university there uh, my, when i was doing uni course a few months ago one thing was designing the board game like when I heard that he designed a board game, it was like it was designed like it's like kids' board games still, something like that. Yeah, uh, um, yeah. And I did it at school. Uh, you know, used to um, do the uh, used to write used to love the uh, like Dungeons not, not Dungeons and Dragons, um, Death Trap Dungeon. Yeah, and you'd be like turn to page something. I let my make my mum do it. <laughs> oh, <you're laughs> doing this and like you know, I'd have to write these these like, things. That, like you know, if you you know, do you stab the the elf or do you like not stab him? And like turn to this page, it was like three pages long. Uh, but I feel like yeah, me and Ivan would get on really well. I just like the way he does sort of. He's very analytical, and I can see it being frustrating when you like to play games and people are and you're failing at what you claim to be good at. You know, everyone else says I'm this, I'm that, I'm a you know, magician, I'm a psychologist and all this sort of thing. But when you say I'm good at games, this is exactly the sort of thing that he should actually be the best at and you're failing. It's not. Yeah, not, absolutely. Not <laughs> and speaking of Ivan, I am going to be speaking to him as my next interview guest for the podcast. So I'll definitely have questions to ask him about his background in games and how that influences playing of the game. Maddie, at this point, tells Tom again that she thinks Wilf is the traitor. She now also throws Hannah into the mix and she says in her interview, I honestly think I should be in the FBI. I'm not sure about that. I mean, maybe she could play an FBI agent in a, a TV show, but for real, it's, it's not looking good, Maddie. John also, he doesn't turn on Wilf like he's turned on Aaron, but he kind of aggressively asks him, why did you get so emotional this morning? And I've just written in my notes, John needs to pipe down. He seems very <laughs> unpleasant to be around. So there we go. And I, I think we've covered that. <laughs> Come midnight, Tom, very quickly as they're all leaving, tells Wilf that he's a suspect. It shows he, ob he obviously trusts Wilf, and he's obviously picked the wrong person to trust. So Wilf's got a little bit of insight now again that people still suspect him. He's not off the hook, even though he didn't get any votes tonight. And from there, we move to Traitor's Tower. The traitors immediately start to discuss wealth and how emotionally was at breakfast and how that's probably backfired. This reminds me, again, no spoilers, but this reminds me of something that happened in the US traitors with, with something that the traitors, one of the traitors did at breakfast that was very silly of them. So when he said he did it on purpose, he's like, oh yeah, what I thought I'd do is I'll be over the top. I was like, yeah, okay, that's what you were doing. Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, no don't do not that. convinced. <laughs> no. The traitors then tell each other that, you know what, they're always going to back one another up. They've got each other's back. So even though a couple of people are suspecting wealth a little bit, Amanda and Alyssa say, it's fine, we're going to defend you. Then there's a knock at the door. Claudia enters. She tells them tonight there is not going to be a murder. And instead, there's going to be a trial. They're going to choose three other faithfuls to be put on trial, and this is where the episode ends. Andy, what are your thoughts then about this idea of a trial? What do you think? What's the purpose of it? Why, what, you know, why have the producers created this? 
I don't know. Um, it's it's an interesting idea, but it's just like it's, it's difficult because obviously I know what what happens, but I suppose it, I know at the time I was sort of thinking it was like you know that they were going to almost sort of like have to sort of you know when you think of trial you think of the courtroom and like they have to sort of fight their case. Um, but it is obviously that like she said like you know just putting three people up to be looked at basically. Um, and obviously she does say that a that a traitor can actually put themselves in there as well, which is really interesting. Yeah, the trial's an interesting one. I don't know if they should put themselves in or not, or if I would want to go in if I was a traitor. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be interesting. Um, we obviously know, like again, not not spoilers because it is literally the first bit of the next episode, but it does cause some issues. And I think it was on the coming up next episode, you could see what was going to be known as the Red Breakfast. So it's not a huge spoiler. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, uh, it, it causes a rift. <laughs> it does. And at first, I, I didn't really understand the point of it. I thought it seemed a bit strange, but yeah, it actually ends up having completely explosive consequences. So I guess it works out really well for whoever made that decision to put that in the game. Uh, it's, and yes, next episode is, is a super one. <laughs> now, a couple more things I wanted to ask you about, Andy, before we conclude our trade our traitor game. I mentioned your arts and craft business a little yeah. bit earlier in the podcast. Maybe you could tell us a little bit more about that. We are <clears throat> actually now we've booked in loads of craft fairs. So we talked about it before. So yeah. uh, basically uh, my wife and I have a small little say craft business. It's like more of a I'm trying to sort of make it branch out a bit more to sort of design as well. So I'm going to do get into graphic design, but at the moment it's just like it's just it's very core. It's a uh, arts and crafts business. So we're doing we just basically sell nerdy stuff um, at craft fairs, conventions, uh, and it was really starting to get going really well before the pandemic, and then the pandemic came along and ruined everything. So we're just getting that back up and going again. So it's uh, what what's in the box arts. Yeah, we're starting to really get things going. We've got, um, I actually had an order online the other day from a friend I put up. I made these, um, I think you you did see them, the um, the N64 cartridges. Yes, that's exactly the, what I was going to ask you about. Yeah, they're like Nintendo 64 cartridges, um, key rings and uh, magnets. And it's basically, um, I designed a cartridge on my iPad, just using like a CAD software, uh, 3D printed them. And then um, I got my wife a, a, cr- a cricket machine for her birthday and that like does like fun cutting and things so you can cut like um vinyl for glass things so i cut out the little pictures i've done like uh you know golden eye zelda mario kart i think it was you that suggested the mario kart one wasn't it? i did yeah <laughs> so uh yes yeah, so i did that and it was um yeah they look so cool i mean i was i was when it's one of those things that when they when you look at it you go that looks so much better than i thought yeah, so we do sort of just things like that, just nerdy things that, you know, like are easier to make easy things easy to get hold of. So I, I'll be honest, I make stuff that I want. I think that's the best way to sort of put it. So if I want something, I'll make it and then I'll do that to like sort of sell. So stuff like that is, yeah, is, what we, uh, is what we sell really. Yeah, the N64 cartridges, they're so cool. Well, I'm going to say I want to buy some as presents. I just hope that none of the friends I have who... I'm going to buy them for are listening to this because that's their present spoiled. <laughs> but as any millennial who grew up with Nintendos, like these, they're they're really really cool. Um, I'm so going to be doing more. Play. Yeah, I'll definitely be doing more. I'll be doing like because my dad saw them. Obviously, he's a bit older. <laughs> he he wanted me to do him a uh, Metroid one for like the the Super Nintendo. So yeah. I'm going to do some Super Nintendo cartridges and stuff. So it's uh, yes, we call it. So a friend of mine saw the the cartridge and he asked me to do a um, like a like a low poly count um, heart for his his girlfriend's uh, Valentine's Day present. Uh, and that was really fun because it was my first sort of experience of working with someone is to get like a product that they like. So, I, you know, I sent him pictures of it and then he sent it back. And that was, it was like a nice little sort of experience to sort of actually, you know, work with someone and get what they want and using my experience to sort of, you know, try and sort of say, is this good? Is this good? This is what I think. And then say... Yeah, it's really it's going it's going good. I'm really excited to get the first one going. The first craft fairs on the first of April, so I have a month to really start putting things together now. <laughs> Fantastic! Yep, yeah, definitely. People should check what's in the box arts out on Facebook and get in touch with you. I started something last week, uh, kind of by accident, but I'm going to continue it this week. Andy, is there 
any anything else other than the traitors that you are really into right now any show film music that you think listeners should check out yeah absolutely absolutely this is a really like I never would have seen it if it wasn't for a mate of mine who messaged me randomly. So it's a Korean program called The Physical One Hundred on Netflix. Yes. Um, <laughs> so so some of you'll be watching that as well. I'm loving it. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's so good. I, just, I don't want to like. I it's, it's, it seems to be easy to sort of compare it to the real life Squid Games, yeah. but it's actually more than that. It's basically a um, hundred people at the very peak of their physical sports so it's not, not all sports so you can have someone like you might have like a weightlifter you might have a so i think what's so a cheerleader in there yeah it's a guy who's like an arm wrestling champion and it's like um mmm mma fighter and there's a guy who like some olympic gold medalists and things but i think what sort of struck me at first is it's just how respectful they are of each other they obviously a lot of sportsmanship and they're like obviously very competitive but when they when they see like this is mma fighter he comes in and like they just all like are in absolute awe of this guy yeah. you can totally see why but as the episodes go on like he's just he's a obviously he's a great leader really nice really nice person and it just also it's actually extremely wholesome for a lot of like um there's like lots of wrestling and stuff in it and things it's, it's extremely wholesome it's lovely it's it's like i find myself being quite upset about crying earlier on i find myself like you're actually tearing up at certain points because of just how nicely and respectful are they are of each other i think career at the moment is like really experiencing like a massive um boom when it comes to like you know parasites one of my favorite films um squid game is obviously huge uh bts very very famous uh k-pop band you know they're you know they're, they're taking over the world and i'm here for it because it's um it's great yeah physical 100 is is so good you don't even need to be a big fan of sports it's because it is it's like a reality show really um and yeah these hundred people they each episode they whittle themselves down to one's left and it's they win it's something like 400 million won which is i worked out to be nearly two hundred thousand pounds yeah i did that calculation uh, so, as well yeah. straight away <laughs> on the phone. Did. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so it's a yeah brilliant program would definitely recommend that one and it's masterful at ending every episode with a brilliant cliffhanger <laughs> i haven't finished the season yet i've watched i think six episodes uh and every time i get to the end i have to watch the first five or ten minutes of the next one because i i need to see what happens next it's funny it's not the kind of thing probably that i would normally watch i think if i told people if i ever told my friends i was watching it they'd be really surprised but it's very addictive very entertaining and i'm so glad you said that about there's how respectful they are. I was describing it to my dad the other day, and that's one of the main things I said is what's so lovely is although it gets really not violent, but you know, really it's obviously very physical and they are and some of the challenges they are throwing one another to the ground and some of them getting really hurt. At the end of every challenge, you know, they shake hands, they bow to one another. It's it's really lovely to see. So I'm, I'm very- so glad you mentioned it. It's really ironic how much they like, you know, when they're in the first episode, literally the first episode pretty much is just them walking around looking at, like, they've got plaster casts of all their torsos. And they're just ironically going, oh, my God, look at that guy's physique. Oh, my God, is, is he coming along? Oh, we might as well go home because he's amazing. <laughs> and the guy they're talking about, by the way, is amazing. Andy, we have one more thing to do before we finish. It's time for our own banishment. We've been playing the Trade Our Traitor. I told you a lie. Did you tell me a lie? I did. It wasn't a good one, though. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, well, I'm, go- I'm going to guess yours. I have two possibilities, although now I've forgotten what one of them is. I'm going <laughs> to go for... I think I'm wrong, but I'm going to say it anyway. Was it... Was your lie the one about reading, like, the Choose Your Own Adventure books... And you used to get your mum to read them. It was. Yeah. It was actually. Oh, I was thinking as we were getting to your just throughout the whole thing, I'm going, I've not been able to sort of get anything like in. So if I need to get it in at the end, I thought, well, I've written down that Ivan is cool. Because I do actually really like, you know, I did design a board game for university. That is true. Um, but yeah, I, just thought, I need to just have a to get in here and just do that. But yeah, that was, uh, yeah, that was fine. <laughs> And you've just remembered that was the other one I was going to guess. The good job I forgot it. Any idea what I lied to you about? 
No. Because I felt like this... I, I thought they had a pattern. <laughs> I'm honest with you. Like, I'm thinking, like, listening to all, the, all your podcasts, I thought he's, he's got a, a pattern. And I thought, it's going to be, like, sure, shortly. I'm, I'm going to get it easily. Because it's... <laughs> usually it's, like, very much... Um, you know, sort of do with like the production of the show, and I couldn't pick up on anything. It was a cheeky no. lie because it was a very, very small lie. Okay, no, I, I can't, can't guess. Okay, my lie was I was talking about Imran, and I said, you know, you could play a drinking game every time he mentions his PhD, take a drink, and then I said. This is the first time he says it in this episode. He mentions it twice more. Two more times. Yeah, actually, he, he doesn't. doesn't. He only he doesn't. mentioned no, it once. No, he doesn't. And so. do you know what? When you said that, I just, that just shows how polite I am. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I'm not going to correct him. Uh, I'm forgetting that, you know, that's the point of the like, oh, my God. I, yeah, I, I did pick up on that as well, but never mind. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll take that. I'll take that as a half one. A half one. <laughs> Andy, thanks so much for joining me on The Trader. Uh, it's always a brilliant discussion with you. I really appreciate it. Hope you've had a good time. Yeah, yeah, really enjoyed it. Really, really enjoyed it. I thank, you, I thank you for inviting me back. It was like when you sent me the message, I was like, yes. I, I was like, I couldn't answer quick enough to say I'll come back on. Oh, awesome. I'm amongst the steam guests now, all the awesome guests you've had. Yes, uh, to be yes. amongst those names, uh, I feel quite uh, quite privileged. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm sure I'll be I'll be asking for your help again at some point, no doubt. I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Thank you. Hello, Trader listeners. I hope you enjoyed this episode and my chat with co-host Andy. You should check out What's in the Box Arts, and I'll put a link to that in the show notes as well. A reminder that if you want to put your questions to some of the faithfuls from the UK and US show. Check out Twitter and Instagram to see which guests are lined up for appearances on the podcast very soon and send me your questions. Twitter is at the Tradar Pod. You can find me on Instagram at the Tradar Podcast or you can email the Tradar Podcast at gmail.com. It would also be great if you could subscribe to the podcast on the platform you're using and even better, leave a review. The more reviews and subscribers, the more easily other fans of The Traitors will be able to find the podcast. I'll be back with episode 4 very soon, followed by a fab interview special I recorded yesterday with a brilliant Traitors UK contestant that you'll definitely want to hear. Until then, stay faithful.